Mystic Astrology. Know thyself. the fundamental dictates for those on the spiritual path is to know thyself and one of the ways in which this can be achieved is via mystic astrology an esoteric branch of astrology that is little known in our video introduction to the planets we provided an overview of the planets within this context and the video introduction to the signs of the zodiac provided an overview of the signs of the zodiac within this context. And this video brings the two together in order to show how one can know thyself within the context of mystic astrology. What does it mean to know yourself? The ancient Greek aphorism, know thyself, is transliterated Knuthi Seotun and was the first of three maxims inscribed on the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. In Latin, the phrase Know Thyself is given as Nosce Te Ipsum or Temet Nosce. The expression has also been used by numerous philosophers. For example, Is when it was used in telling Prometheus that he should better know his place in the great order of things. Socrates and Plato. In Plato's Phaedrus, Socrates says, I am not yet able, as the Delphic inscription has it, to know myself. So it seems to me ridiculous, and I do not yet know that, to investigate anything else. In other words, philosophically, know what you can do and know what you are here to do. Alexander Pope's An Essay on Man, Epistle 2, begins Know then thyself, presume not God to scan the proper study of mankind is man. But perhaps the closest anyone came to the mystic meaning was when Ralph Waldo Emerson, in his poem, titled Chronothisiaton, Know Thyself, stated that to know thyself meant knowing the God that Emerson felt existed within each person. In other words, knowing yourself means to know your higher spirit, self, the face behind the mask of the personality your full potential. Your personality, see our video personality in the mask, may have been given you to achieve one of the or more tasks in the great work during this reincarnation. But the self that hides behind the one or more masks one uses to get things done is a much better guide of your limitations but also your full potential, what you are here for. So know thyself is a command to throw aside the masks and identify what really underpins all these personas you may have used, or will use over your life. You know why Morpheus brought you to see me. So, what do you think? Do you think you are the one? Honestly, I don't know. You know what that means? It's Latin. It means know thyself. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Being the one is just like being in love. 
No one can tell you you're in love. You just know it. Through and through. Balls to bones. The advantages. By knowing yourself, you know your final destiny. Know your destiny and you know whether you have achieved what you were given to do in the great work. See the video on the great work. If nearly achieved, you will be at the latter stages of the spiritual path. The main reason for wanting to fulfill one's destiny is that it means you will not get reincarnated on this plane or planet again. You will be somewhere, but it won't be planet Earth. But note, free will. All men and women have free will. Even if you know your destiny, nothing forces anyone to make attempts to fulfill it. The person may decide they do not want to be on the spiritual path and may simply want to spend their entire life devoted to the frivolous pursuit of pleasure, wealth and sensual delights. They're not my words. But the pursuit of one's destiny does not exclude pleasure, wealth and sensual delights. Sometimes these can be enjoyed before the serious pursuit starts. And sometimes the pursuit of one's destiny even involves pleasure, wealth and sensual delights. Our video on the theatre provides an overview of the great work and the meaning of destiny using this analogy. Carl Gustav Jung, Psychology and Alchemy. As we all know, science began with the stars and mankind discovered in them the dominance of the unconscious, a complete projected theory of human character. Signs of the Zodiac and Contrast Every zodiac sign is described by an enormously long list of contrasting attributes. See our video on contrast. Each attribute consists of two contrasting aspects of the same property, like polar opposites. Thus, serious may be paired with frivolous. These very long lists have been compiled over eons of time from observation. Evidence, in other words. So, for example, Capricorn might have the positive attributes, mature, detached, strategic and business-oriented, good planner and organiser and the negative attributes of manipulative and perhaps a bit stiff, cold and formal. In contrast, Aries might have the positive attributes, pioneering, innovative and strong, and the negative attributes of direct and sharp, for example, a bit tactless and lacking perseverance. Nobody, however, can claim to be a Capricorn or an Aries because that is not how it works for a person or other entity. Even saying someone is a typical zodiac sign is not true. Because the polarity of the attribute matters, positive or negative. And all the other things going on at the same time matter. Which planets are in which signs? Which houses are they in? What are the aspects between them all? So that juxtaposition of all the signs of the zodiac, planets and houses, tempers the characteristics. It may negate or cancel an attribute or reinforce it so it becomes more intense and extra attributes may get added until one ends up with an entirely unique set of attributes. 
The process can be thought of almost like going into a sweet shop, where you are picking from jars of sweets, some planetary sweets and some zodiac sweets. And the sweet shop has all sorts of special offers, where you get double the quantity of a zodiac sweet if you choose a specific planet sweet. Some sweets are sour and some sweet, but they are all mixed up in the jar. And it is only when the sweet shop man dips his hand into the jar and pulls out a sweet that you know what it's going to be. So a true mystic horoscope covers all the attributes, positive and negative, as well as their intensity, determined by the aspects and patterns and other juxtapositions. The Gokalan Work, Geoffrey Dean Until his death in May 1991, Michel Gokalan, born 1928, was the world's most formidable scientific researcher into astrology. His studies rank among the best ever conducted. His early fascination with astrology led to 45 years of research that resulted in a dozen popular books and about 150 scientific articles. He used rigorous methods and large samples of hundreds or thousands of cases. Planetary effects among eminent professionals have so far replicated across a total of 34 out of 35 studies, of which 8 are by independent researchers. His main finding was that the key character traits described by astrologers occur most often when the appropriate planet is rising and passing the meridian. His other results were inconclusive, mostly because he did not take destiny into account, but jobs, and jobs are not the same as destiny. But he did find that the correlation between planet traits and actual traits was much higher for eminent roles. Those with the biggest roles were delivered exactly what was needed when they needed it. Comment on Gokulan's books and work. I feel the positions of the planets are like tumblers on a lock. The planets have to be in that specific position for the characteristics of that individual soul to pass between the infinite to the finite. Interpreting Natal Charts The chart used to describe one's characteristics or attributes, and thus destiny, is called the Natal Chart. It combines the signs of the zodiac and the planets, and their position in the location where you were born, on the date and time you were born. It is almost impossible, given the sweet picking analogy, that anyone will end up with the same sweets in his destiny bag. As such, your sweets and your destiny bag will be unique. You'll be eating your sweets over the course of your entire life. Some sweets may not be needed until you are retired, some may be used early on, but they are all there, ready and waiting. And some may be a terrible shock to you, awful, bitter and destructive sweets you never knew you had. But you must accept they are a part of you. And though the discovery of this somewhat negative you, the you you didn't know existed, may be a terrible shock, you need to accept it. It has a purpose, and even if you may not actually use it, it may be there in reserve, just in case you need it. Having an attribute does not mean you have to use it, and sometimes it even seems we are given attributes to test ourselves. The devil may indeed be within us, our own tester and tempter. Nobody's a bad boy or girl. 
the entirely unique collection of attributes we may discover may seem to make no sense. And certainly when we are young, they will make no sense at all. But destiny is like the role in a play. And we saw that in the theatre video, except that we may never see the end of the play. Horses for courses. And the saddest thing in the world is when an Arabian stallion is forced to pull a rag and bone man's cart. But no one should ever say my life has been wasted because you may actually have done something that appears insignificant but is actually truly key. The butterfly wings that caused a tornado of positive change. Emily Dickinson And the earth, they tell me, on its axis turned wonderful rotation but by 12 performed. <laughs>